Welcome to Naperville Notables. I'm Liz Spencer, a conversation with people making an impact in our community. Joining me today is Judy Carabo, and she's the new CEO of 360 Youth Services. Welcome. Thank you so much, Liz, for having me. No problem. It's nice to see you. You too. So tell me, I noticed a little bit in your background that you have communication degrees before you got the social work and everything else you need to be to be you. <laughs> what what was the background? Why communication? Yeah. How did that all get to come coming um, to be? You know, I think it was more dumb luck than anything else. Okay. Um, so I went to a large university and really what, um, was kind of trying to find where my niche mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. and that was a difficult thing to do, and really found my tribe, for mm -hmm. the lack of a better word, with um, the communication department. Um, and it was a relatively large communication department, so you had media studies, you had you know, rhetoric and debate back right, then, right, right, yeah. um, which is dating myself. And then there was also interpersonal communications, mm -hmm. and that was the part that I really was interested in. Um, and so it, there's, there was oddly this kind of similarity between interpersonal communications and how um, we are in relationship with mm -hmm. one another and then what I eventually did later on in life which was more of the clinical and social work degree so it sounds like it's a little disconnected but actually thematically it actually fits quite well it does it does I think people underestimate what we need to think about when we're mm -hmm. communicating yep absolutely we, we take a lot for granted and there's a lot behind everything we say totally and the whole nonverbal communication mm -hmm. and relational communication and then even communication within larger systems like families. Right, right, and the, the whole idea that it's circular and you yep. know, yep, it's just not a text anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So talk to me a little bit about leadership. Now you, this is, you've had lots of leadership positions, so this is, I'm not gonna give a number, but you know. <laughs> um, what is it about leadership? What would you say your style is? Oh, what is my style of leadership? Um, I think it's really about bringing people around the table to be able to work on a common cause or towards a common good. Um, so it is really about how do you bring collective voices together and then be able to um, really accomplish something. And I think I learned a lot of that when I was at the Naperville Park District. Um, I learned a lot of lessons actually at the mm -hmm. Naperville Park District, but this um, earlier on in my time with the Park District, one of the things that I was charged with doing was the um, skate park in downtown mm -hmm. Naperville, which was a very controversial project at the time. And um, the Board of Commissioners had decided finally that they were going to put it um, near Centennial Beach. And uh, we ended up pulling together a group of people who were for the skate park and a group of people who were against the skate park and uh, have them work on designing the facility itself. And uh, those who were against it really quickly rallied and um, worked well with some of the teens that were on this committee and really came together to really build this wonderful project. And in the end, seeing everybody really um, celebrate the grand opening was such a great experience. And so for me, that was a pivotal moment in I think my leadership learning my leadership mm -hmm. style was really how do you bring very diverse voices around and work together to achieve something. So I think for me, it's this balance of clinical skills, which is a lot of listening mm -hmm. and paraphrasing and understanding, and then finding the common ground among all of those diverse opinions to be able to move forward. Well, I think it's interesting that, you know, lots of time people think leadership is decision making right you know and quick and stern yep. and look at me and really it's a lot of patience yeah it is and i think that can be one form of mm -hmm. leadership and i think your question was really right on point was more about what is your style of leadership and i think we all have different styles if i were to do that more hierarchical kind of decision making or leadership that wouldn't work well for me this was just a leadership style that i found to be more authentic what do you think it was with the people who were against it? What won them over to be for it? Was it just meeting the kids and finally yeah. realizing they weren't the hoodlums they thought they were? I think that was part of it. I think it was I think it was a couple of things. I think it was really working with the kids and understanding who they are and their passion for that sport. But I also think it was being able to have their voices being heard mm -hmm. and being able to have influence about what was going to be in their neighborhood 
Um, I think that was a real critical turning point for folks is when you know that your voice is being heard. We might not do exactly what you want, mm -hmm. but we can do something pretty close and that you can have influence and power over. And when you have power and can have influence and impact, I think that kind of makes it all mm, feel a little bit more collaborative and cohesive. Right. Well, and I think, you know, it's power, it's influence, it's impact. And we, we often forget that even small bits of that makes such yes. a big difference. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's not the grand, when we say power, people are like, oh my right. gosh, you're powerful. And no, I just want to maybe have power over my bedtime. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Right. If I can see a little bit of me in that plan. Right. I feel much better. Right. Totally. It's interesting. Um, we also, you also talk a little bit because I was creeping on your LinkedIn page <laughs> there about being a problem solver, mm -hmm. and I think that goes well with leadership, at least your style. Because that. Yeah. So, but it, but tell me a little bit about how you think about problem solving. Well, I think it's again, it's a similar theme, right? Mm -hmm. It's about hearing collective voices, and so. Um, for me, it's around being able to know that there's a lot of folks who are a heck of a lot smarter than me um, and being able to listen to those people and get their perspectives and then being able to synthesize that and come to a decision when I'm the one who has to make that final call. So in those moments or times where I have to make that final call, you better believe I'm going to get a lot of input and perspectives uh, and be able to understand a lot of sides of the issue before making a decision. So again, I think the, the, how, the way I make decisions is very similar to that kind of leadership style of being able to hear diverse voices, um, but be able to really kind of synthesize and understand all of those perspectives to finally be able to come to a a final decision. I, I think I learned early on in my career that having a group of folks that are diverse that I can reach out to and ask for their opinion or their take on something is really important and has served me well throughout my career. I think it's important because you need to hear and see the different angles. Absolutely. Oftentimes people give you a perspective that you just didn't think yep. about and it's like, wow, glad I asked you before I That's did right. It. That's right. right. Yeah. Many a time I'm like, huh. Yeah. I should. We need to ask. Yeah, and I think the other. I think that. I think that raises the issue of being curious mm -hmm. and humble, also. So to know that I don't have all of the answers and that I need to ask people, um, and and be able to listen to what their perspective is and to be able to take that into account. So not to come into a decision, going, oh, I have all the power. I have all the answers. Mm -hmm. I can handle this, but really to have a sense of humility and a, a way to or an understanding to ask questions and be curious. I would I agree 100%. I think that is I think that's something you learn along the leadership route because yeah. I think early leaders or newer leaders mm -hmm. tend to carry it all thinking, "Oh my god, I'm the leader. I have yep. to do it all." Yep. And and that is that's a heavy burden. That is not sustainable. Well, and I think I did that young in my career. Mm -hmm. I think I think I had that more what I would call play acting the role of a leader, thinking that a leader mm -hmm. made those decisions and you came off sounding very authoritative and like you know it all. And I've learned certainly, I think, with my uh, experience at Family Shelter Service mm -hmm. about being much more transparent, authentic, being able to admit when you make mistakes, um, because I think that gives other people the permission to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just it, I think it also is about having grace with each other that when somebody else makes mistake to understand that we're human and we make mistakes. And that's actually where a lot of the wonderful learning and knowledge comes from. So how has all this past experience prepared you for your new role with 360? I think it's both been a combination of personal and professional. Okay. Um, so from the pers professional uh, perspective, I think particularly family shelter has been a huge kind of um, great past experience to be able to draw draw from for 360. Mm -hmm. um, Family Shelter, as you know, was or is a domestic violence agency that serves all of DuPage County. Um, we merged with Metropolitan Family Services, and uh, that kind of 24/7 uh, operation, like 360, is a 24/7 operation. I think is a really great you know, understanding about what does it take to run a 24-7 uh, crisis kind of organization um, that has a lot of government funding. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's been a really helpful kind of background to be able to seamlessly step into this role. And I think the um, working at the Naperville Park District has been a real um, good experience because there's just such um, 
sense of stewardship that the community, the Naperville community has around 360 and such a sense of, in a way, ownership, that it's not uh, an organization that I necessarily lead, well I do, it really is how the community just embraces and owns so many of these nonprofits. And I guess I use the word own meaning really around this kind of investment in and commitment to and caring for the services that are provided by organizations like 360 or Little Friends or some of those flagship kinds of organizations that are in the Naperville community. So I think that kind of sense of really knowing the Naperville community um, from the Park District experience and that kind of level of commitment and investment that the Naperville community has in the different community organizations has been a real helpful experience as well. And then I think the last piece is, and I've been very open about this when I was at Family Shelter Service, is my own experience as a survivor of domestic mm -hmm. violence. And really using that or, or knowing, while it's different and we all have different stories, I know what it's like not to be heard or to be seen. And so many of our young people are not heard or seen. And while they might have different stories, it's at least a place to begin to have common ground and empathy and understanding um, to be able to do this work. What role do you see 360 playing in Naperville? Mm. I, think, uh, I think 360 does amazing programs and really has this superhuman, super power kind of commitment to the youth in Naperville. Um, and, the, and youth in general in our broader community. Um, I think we have an opportunity to continue the work that has been done in the many decades about being a real community partner. And I think some things like our alliance, which is around a lot of our prevention education and our prevention program, pulls together a lot of different partners to mm -hmm. be able to address the issue of alcohol and drug prevention education. And I think that being that focal point to pull community partners together to be able to address problems that are facing our youth, I think that's the place and role that 360 has served in the past and will continue to do in the future. These issues are much bigger than any one nonprofit, and it's really important that we work together to be able to solve these. And I think 360 is uniquely positioned um, because they've done it in the past and they have that history, to continue to be that kind of convener of all of these agencies and organizations to be able to really address issues that are facing our youth. Well, and you mentioned it's past. You're, you're getting ready to celebrate 50 years. That's right, in 2021. Right, and it was really created out of, a, of grassroots recognizing that yeah. youth needed some some place to go, some place to be heard, not mm -hmm. necessarily needed to be disciplined or anything like right. that. They just needed a place. Right. And so now 360 is that place. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that's really uh, an important part of our identity as an organization is this ability to be able to accept people where they are at, accept young people where they are at and what their challenges are and to be able to help them develop what we call protective factors or to be able to develop resiliency skills so that they can thrive. And it's really an honor to work with the staff who are just so committed to being there and to being where our young people are at. That's awesome. Well, I wish you a lot of luck. Thank you. A lot of success. I think it's a wonderful <laughs> fit. I think it's Thank a, you. a great place for you and I think it's a great place for the community. Thank you so much. I'm so I'm completely thrilled um, about this opportunity. I think it's a great fit for everybody. So thanks for joining me. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with more Naperville Notables. Stay tuned.
Welcome to Naperville Notables. I'm Liz Spencer, a conversation with people making an impact in our community. Joining me today is Karen Charvat, and she's from Power Forward DuPage. Hi, Karen. Hi. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me in. Now, Karen, I know you for, for many years, but one thing I know about you is you have a heart and you are a huge volunteer. Why? Why do you volunteer? That's where I think many people know you from is your volunteerism. I absolutely do love to um, volunteer. And for me, um, if I had to explain it, I, I really think that having the opportunity to sort of walk in someone else's shoes, have the opportunity to um, understand somebody else's struggles um, and learning how I could possibly help them um, really has made me, um, quite frankly, a better person. So volunteerism for me really is kind of um, a way of being, gives me a purpose. And, um, you know, hopefully I can change the world in my own small way. I think it's wonderful because I think we, I think if we all tried to change our, change the world in our own small way, it'd be a great place. So I agree. So, one of the areas that you volunteer with is the women's clubs, the yes. junior women's. Yes. So I'm not even going to attempt to explain that <laughs> because I, 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 when we sat down and had coffee last week, I mm -hmm. learned so much more about that organization that I had mm -hmm. no idea. So why don't you start me off with telling me the the overarching organization how that works okay um, I will do my best so um, Naperville Junior Women's Club mm -hmm. Naperville Women's Club right you know we coincide side by side right. here in Naperville and we are actually um, part of a larger federation called the General Federation of Women's Clubs um, that organization was actually founded in 1890 it is um, really um, known as I would say um, the oldest if not well, at one time, I should say, the largest women's uh, volunteer service organization in the world. And currently today, there's about 80,000 members strong. Wow. Um, and like I said, Naperville Juniors, Naperville Women's Club are, are both uh, part of that federation. But really, the distinction between the two is um, the women's club was chartered first. And um, once our women's club sort of I don't want to say got tired, but they kind of got tired. As yeah. I said, they were they were founded in 1890, and you know, 20, 30 years into it, you know, they were tired. So they had done a lot. They had done a lot. Yeah. Um, we're actually credited with um, um, starting 75 percent of the nation's libraries, and these women would um, go out in the the horseback in the in the wagon with books and and go around all the different um, villages and towns at the time, and and really um, the focus was on literacy at the time, and you know, it's it's really through the years has um, really progressed into more or less um, taking up anything to do with um, underprivileged women and children, a lot with domestic violence and child abuse. Um, but after that 20 or 30 year introductory period, um, the women's um, club ladies decided to get their daughters involved. Mm -hmm. And that really was the introduction of the junior level of membership. And um, just for example, Naperville did not have a junior women's club until um, 1967. So okay. we are 53 years old oh, wow. this year. Yes. And we also have juniorettes. And juniorettes are young ladies um, here in Naperville. They're the Naperville juniorettes, of course. And those are ladies, you know, 12 to 18 oh, that wow. are actively, you I know, giving know back and trying to change their communities. So there's actually three levels of membership. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Does the Naperville Juniors have a different, is everybody have the same theme of domestic violence and improving and family and child abuse? It's or is definitely there a main, a main theme, but um, really each individual club, um, chooses. you know, takes on their own. Okay. Yes, definitely. And it can be, you know, anything from conservation to education, those roots of literacy, um, but primarily anything to do with, um, you know, helping women and children in our communities. That's wonderful. And so you're a member of the Naperville Juniors? Yes. Yes. Well, wow. and the Plainfield Juniors, Juniors and the Joliet Juniors. Yeah. Can't leave them out. Uh, can't, yeah. No, no, not at all. <laughs> so I don't know how you t have time for all that. And one of the other things that you, you have done, and I think it's because, you know, going back to touching your heart in that, is that you were the, at least this past year, the top fundraiser for the Walk for Alzheimer's to support the Alzheimer's yes. Society. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. both you and I have family members who are, are touched by that. In my case, it's both, well, it's my dad right now, but it was also my mom. Mm hmm. 
-hmm. And so I appreciate that you walk to try to get that white flower. Mm -hmm. Uh, me too, because I'm uh, not a walker, <laughs> and I, I really should never pretend to be. Um, um, but in all seriousness, you know, my mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's about four years ago, mm -hmm. um, actually, literally right after I got remarried, and um, it took me a couple years um, to get my arms around it and and what it really meant to. Um, you know, have a parent with it mm -hmm. and living with it. Um, and I, I, I spent those first couple of years really trying to fix it mm -hmm. um, because I'm a fixer mm. uh, and, you know, learned fairly quickly that this is not something that you can fix. Yep, you have to roll with it. You have to roll with it. It is going to happen with or without you. So um, that's when I realized I, I needed to, um, you know, make some changes, and I decided to um, involve myself with the Alzheimer's Association and and join forces with friends and family to form a team for the Walk to End Alzheimer's Naperville. And uh, you know, big shout out to Big D's daughters. Mm -hmm. um, so through that support network, really kind of has um, you know given me the tools to sort of stabilize all of that and really get a balance on how best to um, be there for my mom take care of what I need to for her care mm -hmm. um, and her happiness, as well as balance, um, you know, my, my career and, you know, other life responsibilities, sure, really. Sure, it is, mm -hmm. it is tough that way. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and the money raised from that walk is really going towards research to get mm -hmm. that white flower, that fi white flower standing for somebody who's been free or not with Alzheimer's or a cure for Alzheimer's. Right. Yeah, so right. I think that's super important. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that you've done for, for NCTV is with us, with Game On, you've played. Yes. And, and mm. I know. So keep going. Keep, keep, keep going. going, Liz. All right. <laughs> and, and then you came back and you helped us um, do some of our little uh, live reads, our live ads. Yeah. So you played some characters. It was a blast. We had a great time. You did a wonderful job. Thanks. Tell me a little bit. You have a love for theater and dance and you're really good at it. What where did that come from? Is that a background from high school? Is that a theater background? <laughs> yes, high school musical. Yes, okay. no, I, d I was. I was a drama kid and a cheerleader in high school. Um, I attended St. Francis Academy in Joliet. It is now Joliet Catholic Academy. You know, go Angels, go Hill. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, that, that background really sort of sets you up very well for um, certain life skills, you sure. know, we learn things like, you know, the show must always go on. Mm -hmm. uh, what's another good one? Um, you know, if they can't hear you sing louder, mm -hmm. <laughs> those types of things. Um, I joke, but um, literally, I think being involved in a, in a drama program at that age, you know, kind of just gives you a little bit more confidence and really sets you up well for, you know, tackling things like public speaking. Sure. And, and for me, in my job, um, you know, that's really proven invaluable over the years, really. I agree. I, I think a theater background just really, it makes you comfortable with standing up in front of people and, mm -hmm. and you need to in business. That's what you do. Absolutely. So on, on top of all this volunteerism, you, you have a really big job. You are the executive director for Power Forward DuPage. Yes. So I don't think we all understand what Power Forward DuPage is. Tell us a little bit about that. Happy to do so. Um, I'm just one of those fortunate people. I really love my job. I love what I do. And Power Forward DuPage represents um, really the best and the brightest electrical talent in and around DuPage County. We represent 440 electrical contractors and over 1,600 union electricians through the IBEW Local 701. And to put that all together, Together, um, we basically uh, connect businesses and residents to just the right electrical contractor that they may need that they may need for you know the residential or commercial business needs. I think one of the things that you've really helped the community with through your role there is bringing a spotlight on trades for mm -hmm. the high school kids. Mm -hmm. I think that people don't understand that with a career in the trades that involves science, math, everything that you know the person electricity is powerful force yes it can kill you it can kill you yes and so that is mm -hmm. you know a great 
career and something that we all should embrace, where sometimes I think it gets tucked in it, not in necessarily the best light. Yeah, and you know, that's just been, um, you know, throughout the years, years. What's, what's happened. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I, I take that role very seriously in trying to, as I had said, change that narrative a right. bit mm -hmm. and, you know, really educate everyone to the possibilities of an alternate path to college. Um, and you can really only do that you know, through through educating them as to what all is involved. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, all of this, your volunteerism, you know, your work at Power Forward DuPage, takes a lot of leadership. Tell me a little bit about your leadership style. Hmm, my leadership style, that's, um, it's hard because I, you know, I, I think there's actually like a lot of definitions for leadership mm -hmm. and um, living as long as I have, I've actually, I've come across a lot of, you know, good leaders and bad leaders, right? right? And I kind of subscribe to, you know, I guess one main philosophy and, you know, that is, you know, leadership isn't necessarily about a title. And I find a lot of people sort of get swept away with, with that. Um, and they sort of strive to hit their next rank, um, you know, thinking that they're going to be fulfilled with that next level or that title. And, and for me, leadership is much more of, um, you know, an inspirational thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like, you know, when leaders inspire me or motivate me to, to take action um, and inspire me to do something, you know, really truly motivate me to get up off the couch, start a team, walk to end Alzheimer's, that type of a, of a feeling to move and really change things instead of, you know, that um, more of a leadership, you know, direction of where people just tell you what to do. And, um, you know, I, I just, it's all about inspiration and motivation for me. And I, I really try and, you know, hope, hope to do that for others. I think you do. Mm -hmm. You inspire and motivate me. So thanks for taking time out of your day to come and chat with me a little bit and tell me a little bit about what you do and what Power Forward to Page yep. is all about. And thank you for volunteering. It's super thank important. Thank you. Thank you for joining me on Naperville Notables. 